Hi everyone, it's Dan, and welcome to Drinking a Movie. So on this channel, we pair cocktails and spirits, some of the greatest movies ever made. And we got an excellent pairing for you tonight, but before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, or if you're returning and have not done so, please click the subscribe button, please click the like button on this video, and you can even click the notification bell, which will let you know when new videos are posted. It goes a long way to helping me out, and I really, really appreciate it, so thank you. Okay, so tonight, we're turning Japanese. I really, really think so. First, a vodka-based cocktail that came out of the end of World War II in Japan. It's very crisp, very delicious. Second, we're going to explore a movie by one of the greatest directors of all time. In fact, the movie is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. So, grab your kimono. Let's make it happen. Okay, so first on the menu is the kamikaze. Now this is essentially a vodka-based margarita. Very crisp, very delicious. Obviously tastes a little different than the margarita does, but I think you'll enjoy it very much. Second is a movie called Rashomon by Akira Kurosawa. Like I said, considered one of the greatest directors of all time, and this film is considered one of the greatest films of all time. In fact, on the British Film Institute's rankings, it ranks 26th out of the 100 greatest movies of all time. So quite an accomplishment great movie and we'll get into it a little bit deeper but first let's make that cocktail before we get into the cocktail let me give you a little bit of history around it so the kamikaze was invented on an American naval base in Japan shortly after World War II and it really achieved a high level of popularity in the 1970s and 1980s of course those at those times it was really served as a shot. We're using the cocktail um, recipe though and serving it as a cocktail because I don't recommend doing a lot of shots before you watch a movie. Um, it's, count, it's counterproductive in my opinion. So we're gonna do the cocktail. Super refreshing. You're gonna enjoy it and it still has that potency so you'll want to sip and sip gently. So alright, enough, enough talk about that. Let's get into the cocktail. So the first ingredient is uh, vodka. I've got my giant size Tito's here. I highly recommend it. I've got my shaker full of ice. Of course, we're using fresh ice. You don't want any pre-melting ice. And of course, my OXO jigger, um, which has all the great measurements. So this recipe calls for two ounces of the Tito's vodka. Good stuff right there. And then next up is the Contro. Now, um, you can also use triple sec. Contro is a little bit better, a little bit higher on the uh, food chain, if you will. Um, I recommend Contro. It's a great ingredient, particularly for margaritas. Um, you can use triple sec, though. Nothing wrong with that. You're still going to enjoy it. But I'm using Contro, and we're going to use three quarters ounce for this drink. So three quarters ounce of Contro. And then the final ingredient is the lime juice. Of course you want fresh lime juice, 100% lime juice. You do not want pre-sweetened, you do not want roses. Um, if I had enough lime I would have squeezed and made fresh juice, but this is good too. Just fresh 100% lime juice. This also is three quarters of an ounce. So the same as the Contro. Mix that in. All right. So now we just need to put the top on and shake. And remember, you want to shake side to side, not up and down. And you shake for about 20 seconds. OK, when you're done shaking, get your chilled cocktail glass. I keep mine in the freezer. You're shaking uh, liquid. Strain it right into the glass. Looks really good. Looks very cold, very refreshing. Put that out of the way. Lime wedge, final touch, little squeeze. Plop her in. And bingo, you have yourself a kamikaze. That looks amazing. All right, let's go check out that movie. I 
All right, welcome to the movie chair. So, got my kamikaze, as is our custom. I will give you my impressions on this drink before we get into the film. So, let's get into it. Mmm, mm, that's good. Very good. So, a little bit tart. Um, I think the lime is really prevalent in the beginning. Um, obviously, the control balances out quite a bit, but that initial tartness, which is really, really good. Very cold, which helps immensely to the refreshing aspect of it. And also, there's no lying, this is not a sucker punch drink, meaning you see this punch coming, and the vodka is pretty, pretty prominent up front as well. Very, very strong drink. Again, this is a maybe a two drinker. Um, I can see why you'd want to, you know, how it was birthed from the shot. Um, but yeah, you want to go easy on this, but it's delicious nonetheless. Um, all of the flavors complement each other, really bring home a very, very tasty, crisp, refreshing cocktail. Okay, so Rashomon. Now this movie is considered by so many to be the greatest movie of all time, at least in so many top 10 lists for sure. Now, the British Film Institute has it listed 26 out of the 100 greatest movies. And that's quite an accomplishment. As you know, that list is comprised of um, film critics and uh, film directors. So people who generally know what they're talking about. So quite an accomplishment and, and well-deserved for the impact it's had on, on film to follow. So what makes this great to me? What are my three keys? Number one is Kurosawa, uh, the direct director. Incredible. Um, stylistic serving the story influence um, pace e editing he's just he is simply the master and I'll tell you who gave him that nickname but it applies so we'll get into a little bit more about Kurosawa I could do a whole series on Kurosawa alone okay number two cinematography now Miyagawa was the cinematographer for this film and just delivers beautiful scene after beautiful scene, captures the mood, captures the essence, really brings Kurosawa's vision to life. And they work together um, on a few films, um, all of them considered master, master films. So, um, yeah, cinematography is big, and we'll get into his story a little bit more uh, later as well. And then finally, Toshiro Mifune, um, perhaps the greatest Japanese actor of all time arguably um, he was basically to uh, Kurosawa as De Niro was to Scorsese uh, he appeared in 16 films of Kurosawa's um, just commanded the screen such presence such personality um, and in this role he brings it all to the table again once again um, but we'll get into um, Mifuni as well so those are my three keys so let's talk about Kurosawa. Okay, Akira Kurosawa, one of my favorite directors and considered by many to be the greatest director of all time. Obviously, one of those topics that's always up for debate, but there's no debating his influence on film um, and his impact on other directors that followed. Just a major, major, major force in cinema. Now, he was somebody greatly influenced by um, Folks like Shakespeare, Dostoevsky, Gorky, and actually a lot of his films, he adapted those writers' works uh, into his films, um, which is really interesting. And he really tapped into the West in terms of a cultural um, go-by. And he caught some criticism in Japan for that, but um, there's no denying that he had a major influence on J Japan's younger generations as well. And he really explored, in the context of Shakespeare, Dostoevsky, he really explored what was happening in um, Japanese culture, spe especially after World War II. So he really kind of had, he was really tapped into that movement. Okay, let's talk storytelling. So Kurosawa presents us with what we know, that while traveling through a forest, a woman is raped and her husband is killed. Then the film presents these facts from four different perspectives. So we get the bandits, uh, the bandit or the perpetrator who started this whole incident. We get his perspective. We get the woman's. We get her dead husband's via a medium. 
and then we get also get the perspective of a witness who saw it all while he was hidden and um, what's really really fascinating is how you can look at the truth through these interpretations that surround it um, it was a very unique approach for the time it's been kind of certainly inspiring for other stories similar if not completely reused to some degree but just in a really really fascinating way to see these differing perspectives around what are facts um, it's really really well done stylistically there's a reason why George Lucas Steven Spielberg and Francis Ford Coppola referred to Kurosawa as the master from framing shots setting mood orchestrating and capturing movement he Kurosawa does that better than anybody I know to editing the film with expert visuals and pacing he was clearly clearly the master okay let's talk cinematography now Kazuo Miyagawa really brings Kurosawa's vision to life here in Rashomon I mean the entire film is shot outdoors and Miyagawa captures the scenes beautifully whether it's the heavy downpour at the ruined temple which is really really significant or the sunny day that, that canvases the complete criminal incident there's not one moment where you're in, in an interior shot and um, in nature and the elements play a significant role in the story there were a number of stylistic choices that demonstrated Miyagawa's creativity and his partnership with Kurosawa and you could see why they were a collaborative partnership over a series of films I believe they made three films together all considered masterpieces and um, you could just see together their creative visions really really um, came together okay Toshiro Mifune this man is an acting legend in Japan and globally if you talk about in, in this world of cinema for sure um, he appeared in 16 uh, Kurosawa films uh, and like I mentioned before he was really the acting partner as De Niro was to Scorsese just had that same kind of impact on screen he was such an explosive presence whether it was maniacally laughing charging in with his sword drawn or staring at his fellow actors with slowly burning rage he could turn it on and off in an instant he just had that quality about him um, in fact according to Kurosawa he said that the speed of his movements was such that he said in a single action what took ordinary actors three separate movements to express uh, he, Kurosawa went on to say he put forth everything directly and boldly and his sense of timing was the keenest I had ever seen in a Japanese actor and yet with all his quickness he also had surprisingly fine sensibilities so Mifune was just the perfect perfect actor for a Kurosawa film and in Rashomon he shines there's no doubt about it okay so in conclusion Rashomon is such a great film again one of those great films from top to bottom such an influence on so many movies that followed in fact Kurosawa in general had significant influence over um, we talked about uh, George Lucas um, Sergio Leone in those westerns that he made and the one western um, Magnificent Seven was based on Kurosawa's Seven Samurai so his ability to bring home kind of a popular story tie it into Japanese culture and what was going on in the world in Japan at the time um, it's just unparalleled what this guy could do and the visuals the mood the music the setting everything about his work really pulls you in and captivates you and um, it's just something that's unforgettable and when you have a nice drink like the kamikaze with you um, it goes down even better so please please comment on this uh, video let me know what you think please subscribe if you haven't subscribed please like this video it means so much to me to get that feedback and comment I really want to know what you think about the film um, some people shy away from subtitled films please don't please don't you start watching it and after the first minute you forget you're even reading it's um, it just flows so naturally and to hear it in the, in the original Japanese it's so much better um, let me know what you think about this cocktail too um, it's it's got some power but yet it's refreshing so um, I'd be interested to hear what your take on it is and, and how you made it so please let me know until we see each other again stay safe Enjoy.
and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.